How's it going, YouTube? Uh, my name is Roshan C. Evans. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, I am here with Brother Charles. And, you know, before we start, I just want to say laws are in place for reasons. The reasons laws were created is to ensure safety. But at times, does every law keep our community safe? I don't think so. Um, we talking about the sex offender registry here. You know, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I question, you know, and I'm not, we shouldn't abolish the registry. We need a registration maybe, you know, for certain cases, but every case is not the same. Right. And the impact the registry have on individuals it's it changed lives. I could tell you that <laughs> the yeah. registry changed lives, you know, what and it's not work. much better. Right. You know, so Charles, if I'm not mistaken, you've been on the registry now for 23 years, right? Yes. Like. Can you tell me, like, how has the registry impacted you as an individual? Oh man, I mean, in the beginning, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too bad at all. I mean, I would have to register like once a year, you know. Then you paid a little yearly fee, and the more the years went up, the more it got worse. So, what state are you in? I'm in South Carolina. You in South Carolina, and you actually have to pay to be on a registry. Yes, you they, you got you paying them to public shame you actually. How long are you on the registry for? A lifetime. So, you got to pay for a lifetime registry that you were placed on. Yes. How much is that? Now, in the beginning, it was like twenty five a year. Now here it is. Let's see. Here it is, 2021. Um, I believe the $150 mark started hitting around probably three, four, maybe five years ago at the most. Did you say $150? Yes. A year? Yes. Okay. Now I know a lot of people may think $150 no big deal, but when you talk about just people that come from poverty or, you know, people who have a hard time finding a job or uh, have a hard time maintaining a job, you know, or don't know, you know, like where they going to get bus fare or put gas in a car to get to work, you know, like, yes. How heavy has that bill been for you? That all. Um... The first seven years, man, it's been rough. I mean, you know, when they put it, when they put it on your um, background check and see that, you know, it's like access denied, just like that. And they were like, "Oh, well, Mr. Fair, we do to uh, your background check. You know, we can't hire you and things like that." But after the seven year mark hit, to where you ain't even got to put it down no more. You know, it's it things become a little better. You know, say far as job. Well, I was actually meaning how heavy has that hundred and fifty dollar fee been on you? Man, oh my goodness! If it been heavy, it's that's like paying a. Oh man, it's like paying a um. It's like paying 150 for nothing. I mean, you paying a, you paying a hundred and fifty, you paying them 150 dollars a year for them to public shame you, um, put you in danger, and things like that that can that can affect your life even more. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> you know, like you get sucked into the criminal justice system, and it come with so many different fees, you know, it come with so many fees and yet at the same time, the fees pile up 
the barriers piled up. So, yeah. you know, like you was just talking about employment, you know, and how that's been rough for you. So it was like, you already got a problem getting probably a nice job. Uh, then you getting fees, you know, I'm, I'm sure you probably have probation fees and whatever other fees, whatever classes they chose to put you in that came with fees. Now you got to pay for a registration for a lifetime on top of everything else. Do you got kids? No, no, mm. not at all. But, um, I was going to say something and I just forgot that fast. No worries. So let's go back to employment. You know, like, are you employed now? Uh, yeah, for the time being, you know, I've been catching hell off that, but you no, know, they just something, you know, I got to fight through and hopefully, you know, things will come out better to How where, you know, working? well, this job right here would be two days going on three. Mm. Cause lately, you know, it's just like I've been job to job to job. <clears throat> like every job I get, it don't last long for something. Or maybe, you know, whoever the higher up is at that job might find out about, you know, my past life situation. Actually, one of them turned out to be that way. It was a uh, woman that, you know, I know that you know, we were speaking to everything, didn't send. We didn't see each other a long time, so we spoke on things. And let's see, after that, after that day ended, let's see, by the time I got out the parking lot, the temp service who sent me to that company called me and told me that um uh, they was at they had to let me go because it was brought to their attention. The temp service called to let you go. Yeah, the temp service told me that the company who they sent me to had to let me go because it was brought to their attention about my background. <clears throat> Where that uh, did that uh, temp service uh, eventually help you find a job, or did you have to do that by yourself? Nah, uh, they, they they helped me find another job. You know, um, they sent me to a job that was it. You know, that was background friendly. That wasn't doing background checks. And you know what when it comes to jobs like those, you know, that's really like bottom of the barrel jobs. <clears throat> according to the jobs I used to have. Right. So over the course of 23 years, have you experienced any housing problems? Um, yes. Let's see. At the time, let's see. My mama was dying of cancer in 2011. And um, she ended up getting put out of her, well, she ended up letting the house go. And she ended up staying with somebody who's supposed to be her best friend. And that didn't work out. So at that time, I was staying with a, a girlfriend of mine, you know, saying another city. So I had to come back and be there for my mom doing she's in the position that we in. I mean she's in. So um you know she put in for you know um well she put in for a summer apartment complex and they asked her who else was gonna be with her and you know she put her son down this me. So they looked up everything and that was like well due to his background that's not gonna work. So, you know, we caught hell off that one until she passed. And uh, then I had another situation. And this is where I started finding out something that I that, that I never knew. I applied for um a place one day in the town of Clinton. And to where, you know, it's, it's not around no school or anything. And they were like, well, we got to do a background check, whatever. I was like, cool. So I got my background check and showed it to them. And uh, they was like, well, due to what you have on there, a certain thing you have on there, we can't let you, you know, stay here. But at the same time, that's when I found out that the charges I had from 23 years ago 
was la was labeled as misdemeanors, which I thought there would be felonies, you know, according to how these other sites put it now, but they was labeled as misdemeanors. And with the sled check, you know, I don't think sled checks make no mistakes. Wait, comes to background. how long did you say you had to register? You That's said it. lifetime, right? Yes. But did you just say you, you're, you, that it's misdemeanors? Yes. So you're going to tell me you actually have a misdemeanor case and yet are required to register for the rest of your life? Yes. No, and they, you got to pay for it? Yeah. And it's like these all these other online sites, you know what I'm saying, who does backgrounds and stuff, you know, they got it labeled as felonies, but, you know, with the sled check, the sled check has that as misdemeanors. So I happened to call the woman who does the sled checks one day, and I was like, oh, uh, I see that these uh, sexual conduct with a minor charges are labeled as misdemeanors. And plus, you know, I was trying to get other little petty charges I had on there cleared. So she was able to clear those. And what she said to me, she was like, now nah, this criminal sexual conduct with a minor charge, she like, if I was you, I'd see a lawyer about that one. I was like, okay. So I tried to contact a few lawyers, but it's like they was talking, their numbers was talking out of right. this world. Right. And it's like, how do you expect me to afford, you know, these numbers that you are throwing at me when I'm having a hard time securing a job? You know, yeah. like, you know, the, the amount of W-2s that people may have in a year because of their situation and status, you know, it actually rocks some people's mind because it's like, why do you got so many W-2s? They have no idea it's because of a registry. Yes. You know, um, I know that your case is a misdemeanor and yet you are on a lifetime registration but do you think that one day is a possibility that laws may change and you may be free from the registry? Do you I see look at it, it being possible? I look at it like this. I mean, South Carolina is like, I look at South Carolina as like the last, the, the last of everything, you know, especially changes for the better. You know, they last at everything. And so I'm pretty sure they're going to be the last at this, if they the last of it, if they might just continue to keep it this way. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, they should change, man, because, you know, they making people to look out to be so bad, you know, especially the ones who are not like that, such as myself. Now, the ones who are, you know, I understand. But, you know, they just make it as some of these bad bunches, that got that title, oh, we are the same way. Yeah, I mean, a lifetime of anything is just too much. <clears throat> I mean, like, with a, 10 years of anything, probation, parole, a registration, 20 years, 25, a lifetime, like, how do you expect anybody not to actually get in trouble in 10 years or 20 years or 25 years, 100 years? It's like, Exactly. That's, I mean, it's not always possible. It's not always possible to not get in trouble, you know, in that long period of time. Right. I mean, so with laws being set in place to protect communities, do you feel uh, the registry, the registration, actually keep communities safe or do you think that it do more harm and why no they don't do that to keep that safe because i look at it like this you still got people you know what I'm saying they have a jacket like me in those neighborhoods you know what I'm saying some under their noses and then you know they talk about public you know you can't be in certain spots like schools and and parks and stuff like that but you know they still be around there but at the same time you know you take your you take your kids to Walmart or restaurants or things like that, and it's going you know to where 
you know, everybody goes to. And it could be a few people who got my jack, jacket in Walmart while you out there with your kids. Hmm. Or why you or at the restaurant while you out there with your kids. I mean, anywhere else. I mean, I feel like that's that's retarded, you know, because they run into them regardless. No matter, you know, if they a bad one or a a good one. You know, um, before we wrap up, because it is about our time, I just want to know if you could actually change anything about the registration, the registry, what would it be and why? The thing what I would change is, is that one thing I would change, you know, if you would have met a female, you know what I'm saying, who you, who you thought was, you know, legal, who lied about her age, look legal, you know, tell you she legal, all because she looked legal. It's like these females lied about their ages, you know, it kills me because they do that and get away with it. And that ain't even right, man. You know, I mean, that ain't right at all for a female to lie about their ages and get away with it. You know, being a sales offender, man, that it, it's rough. You know, you can be minding your business, and it could be somebody who just hates you, period. Can make up something on you. And there you go, there's it. Now you got to go through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to go through all that. You know, when I was younger, you know, I can literally remember a nice curtain. And when I say a nice curtain, I'm talking about from middle school throughout high school, where the females that used to be around me used to lie about their age to other people. And not only did they used to lie about their age to other people, but they would tell you or the people in their age bracket that they will not date you because they only date older guys. Yes. And yet when they date an older guy, the person that get in trouble is the guy when the female is making their own decisions to date an older guy and lying about their age. But you want to know something, you know, and I, I really be sitting up here thinking, you know, because like that was like a fad. That was like normal for women to lie about their age and only date older men. And what yeah. I think of is, you know, how many judges or lawyers or prosecutors you know, that sit behind a bench or uh, like represent you or sit there to prosecute you or people actually used to lie about their age when they was a kid or only dated older guys. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, you know, you got, you even got, even on social media, you got some that just play their role like they never done that before. Hey, you know, one question I posted on my Facebook is like, I asked them, how old were, were you when you started having sex? And I got some of the most craziest answers, like eight, nine, ten. And I was like, God, no, oh, really? Right. Really? Right. And, and you know, I, I just didn't understand that part. But I mean, I've now it's like like i say you know they get away with everything but you know people don't also look at it like okay where is she getting this from you know she had to learn it from somebody and it'd be mostly their moms who doing stuff that that's not hiding in front of their face so you know kids kids pick up what they see and what they've been around they do and you know a lot of people a lot of people ain't becoming better parents you know they just you know, let them get influenced by anything or whatever they do. And it feel like, it feel like, you know, it's right, but it ain't right. You know, I must say some people were actually brought up right. And, you know, was taught better, but some of us, for whatever reason, resent our parents or parent or whomever raised us and make a point to do anything we can to rebel, you know? Yes. So, yes. I mean, it, it's crazy, you know, man. We are, we are the, man. We are the living dead out here. The living dead. That's what we are. That's what you are when it comes to this registry thing. You are the living dead, and you know people can die from this, man. I'm, it's it's one old man, man, fat, a couple, a white couple, 
white racist couple killed this old man because they found out he was a sex offender. Killed him. Did anything happen to them? Did they go to jail? Oh yeah, they 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 went to, they went to prison for it and didn't care. Still didn't care. I'm like, man, you know, this is what I gotta look out for. Especially, you know, if you don't know my story or why I got why I got on there, how I got on there. Yeah, the registry certainly does more harm than it does good. It breaks yeah. up families, it tear up families, uh, it displaces oh, families, you know, it play a significant role in your economic status yes you no know, um it could even like draw a wedge in between you and your kids if you have any no i don't but you know they just all yeah but, i mean it, it also it can also ruin your love life too because you know i don't have females interested in me and all it takes is somebody to tell them uh, did you know he was a sex offender? You know, look it up. Now you can, they can pull it up and show him. I, I had one job that I was at for a certain amount of years. And what it was, I was told a few people was going around the company, the building, just showing people my sex offender profile. And I'm like, man, you know, they get away with, some have called me sex offender at the job. Don't know why you're on the list. Yeah, I mean, you know, nobody think that somebody could actually be on the registry because uh, somebody in your age group that was a little bit younger than you snuck out or you was on a social media site that says in the rules 18 and up, you know, and yet they are on here 17 or 16 or however old talking about they 21, you know, yeah. nobody thinks that you are on a registry because you were dating a peer and an angry parent didn't like that you was dating their child. Nobody think about none of that. No, they don't. You know, they just think about, you know, when it comes to the word sex offender, you automatically guilty out and you just like the rest. Of them. To where, you know, it's people who got this jacket because, you know, some of their daughters lied about their ages. I mean, you know, just like you got daughters, you know, you got sons too. What if it happened to your son? I mean, what you gonna say then? He did it, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna say that about their sons, you know, but it's, you know, I'm a son of a mother, you a son of a mother. You know, and the ones who, you know, who got food and lied to, to be put in that position, them are sons of mothers and fathers. And some people actually got money to pay for innocence, even when they guilty while others are innocent and don't have money to pay for their innocence. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, some it takes money. That's all it takes. <clears throat> but um, you know, thank you for coming on. You know, thank you for just talking about your experiences uh with the registry. You know, I hope everything goes well for you in your future. Thank you for just I know that's right. I mean, I just hope, you know, if they do magically, majestically make a change that I won't be like 50 something and 60 to where, hey, it's too late now. See, I'm, 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 I'm heading toward the deadline. Well, it's never too late because people behind you going to continuously get pulled into the system. And if we could change something, whether it's 20 years from today, 15 years from today, it may save somebody else that's just like you coming up. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, you still ain't going to enjoy what little life you have lived like you always wanted to at the same time. Right. So, or, or go anywhere. I can go anywhere I want to. See, I'm going to be a, man, I ain't going to be able to do none of that if I become a 50-something, 60-something, well, I put, I say 60-something to 70-something year old man. I probably won't be able to even hardly move around and go where I want to go now, like. Yes, I'm, I'm at the age, you know, I can't hardly walk or whatever. I can't go where I always want to go now. Yep. Life is certainly unfair, especially for some, you know. Yes, um, but before we wrap up, did you have anything or any last words that you wanted to say? And this is what, and this is what I would say, you know, to, you know what I'm saying? Um, even to the younger guys coming up, to the older guys, you know, I mean, now you got the 
I'm gonna let them know my um to not make the mistakes I made. You know what I'm saying? Um, to be like these state troopers. You know what I'm saying? With these roadblocks, these license checks, if you have to. You know, if you feel some type of suspicion. You know what I'm saying? But just stay on point because, you know, especially with this me too. You know, a female can even lie about you, you know, lie on you, and get you with some hot water. So, yeah, just um, stay on point and, you know, don't don't fall victim. You know what I'm saying? Becoming, you know, a sex offender and bidding up on the sex offender registry because, man, this, man, this is this ain't where this ain't where it's at at all. And to you young females, you know, just don't be lying to your ages. You know what I'm saying? To older guys that you find attractive and really want to get, you know, what I'm really want to do whatever with, because, you know, when you do that, you know that guy. Can, that guy can go down off of you lying. And some of these mothers need to teach their daughters that along with their fathers, since they claim, you know, I got daughters, I got daughters. You know, teach them, you know, not to do things like that to get the next man in trouble or get some man in trouble or stuff like that. Because, you know, now it's like they just take it extremely serious of, of anything. Now, I mean, now the ones who deserve it, you know, yeah, they deserve to be where they at. But not the ones who are not like that, who just like to deal with grown women, you know, not don't have no pedophilic mindset or things like that. But yeah, I mean, I'm a living testament. I'm a living testament. Everything. So yeah, girls will lie about the age. Just be careful and you know, ask for ideas. Yeah, and with the Me Too movement, you know. I am 200% with it. You know, uh, if you do the crime, you do the time. Just let the time be justifiable and not heavier on one end for some, but not as heavy on the other end for others. With the Me Too movement, you know, like, I like the movement. The movement is very much needed. But when we are advocating for the protection of people who you know, may have been violated in certain ways at the same time and the same token, we must advocate for angry parents who try to ruin young boys or young girls' lives because they can't control their kid. At the same time, when we talk about Me Too, we must also point out the fact that every woman who scream whoop or man or boy is not actually uh, the sheep and could actually be the wolf in sheep's clothing. So when we talk about the Me Too movement, we need to advocate for justice and justice for all. That means we need to uh, speak out on people who rape. We need to speak out on people who lie about rape. We need to speak out on the crime. You know, yeah. we need to not only take one side and ignore this side and don't yeah. want to hear what they got to say and uh, ultimately just be so focused on prosecuting somebody because somebody said something. When we look at cases like this, we really need to dig deep, see what happened, you know, get all the facts before we start moving to prosecute people. Um, and I know I said, uh, if you had anything else to say, but I'm going to ask you one more question, actually. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. On, on a real brief note. If you could change anything about the sex offender registry, what would that be and why? Okay, now, um, as far as the ones who are, you know, mentally sick like that, who had those type of fantasies, where they need to stay with they need to stay with it in the position they in. Now, to the ones you know, I'm saying who've been fooled and lied to or lied on, you know, I feel like, you know. They, I, I just feel like, you know, it's a certain time limit to be on there. Don't, just don't, you know, hold it against somebody for life of, of a mistake that, you know what I'm saying, they, they have made. Don't hold nobody uh, uh, for life for that, you know. And at the same time, you know, I would like for the laws to also, you know, prosecute the females who lie about their age and lie about other things. Now, one thing about South Carolina and what they start to do, they are starting to, you know, also 
prosecute females who lie on guys and get them locked up on on anything. They are starting to do that. I give them that. They 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 are starting that. So I give them I give them that for so far. But I just feel like you know, if females out here lie about the ads getting guys in trouble and things like that, they should be prosecuted too. And that that's just how I look at it. I don't matter you know if it got to come down to the parents because. Like I said, kids pick up what they see and been around, especially when it comes to their parents. Well, thank you, Charles. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have something else? But yeah, I mean, I just, I just don't want nobody, you know, especially somebody like me or you who, like me, I've been fooled and lied to, or you, you know, saying your little situation where you didn't know either. And um, I just don't feel like they should hold them accountable for life, you know what I'm saying, for something like that, or pretty much be convicted. Yeah, 200% uh, agree with you, uh, but that is our time. Thank you, you know, for taking the time to just sit back and chit chat with me. You Most know, best definitely. of luck uh, on your future endeavors. I hope, you know, one day things will change, but until next time, I will talk to you on another tune, Brother Charles. Most deaf, pure justice. That's right.